say somebody else's name while you're praying instead of just yours. Amen. When I say this, this isn't a formality. Pray for people and pray for strength. And that just, that's kind of what I'm talking about today a little bit. Look at somebody and say, bringing them back. back. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash bringing them back dot P D F. Amen. We all fall into some kind of error in our lives. Anybody ever fell into error? Amen. Who has never fallen into any kind of error? You just ain't never made no blunder. See? We all do it. We all fall in some kind of error in our lives. Everyone will stumble, fall, or yield to temptation that brings calamity and misfortune. Has anybody ever been in trouble? Amen. Don't nothing feel like trouble. Trouble feels like trouble. Amen. When you're in trouble with God, you're in real trouble. Amen. Amen. First John 1 and 8 says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is what? Not in us. When we say we have no sin, there's always something you could have done better. Amen. There's always something you could have done better. Mature believers in the faith are not impervious to falling. We never arrive or become above reproach in this life because we are humans with ever-changing situations, feelings, and circumstances. Amen. Nobody arrives. Amen. One of the big mistakes that some of the older churches did, they didn't like to talk about, you know, their mistakes or their errors. And so they would make everyone think that they were impervious to mistakes. Because I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, I can't do wrong. You just did wrong by saying that. You just lied. Everyone is capable of doing something. Amen. Everyone is capable. Amen. Somebody make you mad enough, you capable of hating on somebody. You capable of fighting somebody. Arguing. Yes. And so all of these things. Mature believers, we're, we're, just because we've been in the faith a long time don't mean that we have arrived. Paul said in Philippians 3 and 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He said, I, I, I'm not all the way there. He said, but this one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So he's saying, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on my mistakes, but I'm not saying that I won't make any either. That's life. And what I found out is when you try to make people think you supersonic safe, you meta human safe, that's when God will embarrass you and let folks know that what you're talking ain't really what the way it is. A situation will arise and God will show that you ain't all that you've been talking about. So it's best to stay humble. Amen. Amen. The devil comes to test us in our weakest moments to get us to fall. He doesn't just want us to stumble, but actually abandon the course that we own. He don't want you to stumble. He wants you to quit. He wants you out of the race. You know, those people that stumble and fall in the race, but then they still finish the race. They may know they losing, but they're going to finish the race. The devil wants you to quit and not finish. He wants you to leave your call on the table. During these trials, it is important for us to have believers that can help bring us back to where we belong. Look at somebody and say, we're going to be that kind of church. We are going to be the kind of church that when one of us stumbles and falls, we're going to bring them back where they belong. We're going to, amen, we're going to build relationships, have real relationships where we care about people.
people. And we see people as family. And we remember when we needed somebody. Amen. We're not going to sit in here and don't talk to nobody. And oh, we just got our little few we deal with. But the rest of no. No, we're not doing that in this church. That's a devil. And we're not letting that devil in this church. Amen. We going into this new year loving each other. Loving one another. During these trials, it's important for us to have believers that can help bring us back to where we belong. God created the church for this purpose. Romans 15 and 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Look at somebody say, this is not about you. This is not about you. You have to learn how to stop focusing on what you want all the time. Focusing on how you feel all the time. Even when you're upset at somebody, quit focusing on how you feel and think about why are they upset? What is going on with them? What could have happened to them? I know why I'm crazy, but why are they? No, I'm just playing. But you need to think that way sometimes. Yeah. Consider someone else. The internet is making us so selfish. Social media need to be called selfish media. Yeah, because you have so much control over every aspect of that until your life will begin to cater to you and you alone. Yeah, instead of reading the word, you reading comments. Uh oh. Uh huh. Yeah. Instead of praying for folks, you digging for stuff. Yeah. That's what the internet was created to do. Make us selfish. Make us self centered. You got more pictures on that than your own mama have of you. Every angle. Amen. That's amen. You need to be careful with that. But we that are strong, we ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, not to please ourselves. When a person fails or errors, and we have a relationship with them, natural or spiritual, then we should carefully try to bring them back to their senses and rescue them from their fallen state. Amen. Galatians 6 and 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of what? Yeah. Meekness. So you ain't going trying to, mm -hmm, I told you, you should have listened to me. Don't do that. Amen. Don't talk to people like that. That's not meekness. No, that's lifting yourself up. And nobody want to talk to you when you have that disposition. I want to hear that. I know I'm in trouble. I know I blew it. I don't need you lording over me to make me feel worse. No. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, thinking or considering your own self. Lest thou also be tempted. Let me tell you something. When you come down real hard on somebody, come down real hard on them for something they did, Try your best to make them feel bad and make them wallow in it. You know what you're doing? Digging your own grave. It's coming back. It's coming back. And you're going to have to pay for that. And everything you made them feel, you going to feel. Everything you said, they're going to say about you. You're going to pay for that. So you don't push nobody's head down in the mud when they fall in. Amen. You don't stand on their back, step in their neck, kick them when they're down. You better consider yourself. It says it. Don't the scripture say, lest thou also be tempted? So when you even dealing with a person that's overtaking the fault, you better consider, look at somebody and say, you better consider yourself. Yeah, because how you do them is going to be done to you. Amen. And be, you know we beat our children the Bible said beat them so we beat them 
But you got and you got to forgive them eventually. Let them go and let them live. Don't be hanging stuff over your children's head. God's going to let life hang over your head. And then you're not considering yourself when you was that age. Amen. You better learn how to let folks off the hook. Amen. Let God do the punishing. You do the restoring. I know I'm preaching. Amen. Amen. You know, the holiday season come around and, you know, folks start thinking about what people did to them. Especially when they're lonely and ain't got no gifts and the tree is barren. Ain't no gifts under the tree. You start thinking about, well, man, ain't nobody, ain't nobody coming over. Nobody calling me. Nobody like me. So then you got to, you know, well, that's because they know I'm going to tell them about themselves. They know I'm going to tell them. Well, you need to quit doing that so you can have some stuff under the tree. But you shut up. I want to get you nothing. That's not a good thing. Folk don't come see. Folk don't like me because I tell them about themselves. That's not good. Amen. I want people to like me. Now, I'm not going to compromise to make people like me. But I ain't going to go around putting everybody on blast either. This is my calling from God. I'm called to just tell it like it is. Well, you better tell it like you are. You ain't telling that part. If you're going to tell it, tell it all. Amen. Amen. Get somewhere and just shut up. Eat some shut up stew. Hush burger. Just get somewhere and just stop. Amen. But some people are really like that. They think that's a good way to be. Now you know how I am. I just I just say it. You know, you know I I don't have no filter. I just say that. You know, that's mental mental illness. Like, I know how you are, and they have a prescription for that. I don't have no filter. <laughs> Quit saying that. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> I know pastors that pastor like that. Just, I mean, get into it with all the members, mad at everybody. Just always, oh, and they, they, then they call me, man, you know, Pastor, man, I see them people at your church, man, you know. I can't seem to really get anybody to come. <laughs> Nobody likes you. Well, they're not supposed to like me. You know, the Bible said if they hate you, they, brother, <laughs> you got a bad understanding. <laughs> that is not what it's talking about. How you going to lead people that don't nobody like you? You're going to lead people and they running from you. You can't lead nothing that's running away from you. <laughs> if stuff is running from you, you can't lead it. It's going the other way. <laughs> Man, you better learn how to like people. But you first got to like yourself. See, that's, that's the problem. You got shattered mirrors and holes in your wall at home you don't need to be pastoring nobody amen <laughs> when I first started pastoring you know I came off the road doing the truth on hip hop or whatever so I know I was harsh and brash and I thank God for those of you that hung in there with me I had to learn I did I had to come off the truth behind hip hop mode and go into pastor mode and that was a learn. I had to learn that. I was hardcore. Oh, shut up. Get away from me. <laughs> and I had to ask some old preachers say, hey, man, nobody's going to like you. I, I don't like you. So I know your members don't like you. <laughs> and I had to learn. You know, you got to learn how to communicate and fall in love. And then God has to condition your heart. Amen. Now, I love folks no matter what they do to me. I still love them. But God had to condition my heart to accept people like they were, like they are. Amen. Hardest lesson for me to learn. I was telling Jay that the other day we were talking. I, that was the hardest lesson for me to learn was accepting people like they are and lowering my expectations. That's hard for me because I'm thinking, man, I'm preaching this. 
Everybody ought to get it and love it and want it. And some people don't. So I have to lower my expectations. Be like, okay, that's the way they're going to be. All right, I love them anyway. Amen. I know I'm very transparent when I'm preaching, so amen. We all need to know what you got pastor in you. Amen. Amen. I'm not walking around sanctimonious and, oh, don't touch me, brother. Don't, 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 no, don't take no virtue now. I need that. <laughs> I don't understand all of the dramatics and everybody rise when I'm coming in. And I, I don't understand. But Galatians says, brother, if, if you're overtaken in a fault, those that are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. That's basically saying those that know how to do it. <laughs> if you're spiritual, you know how to restore people. Amen. The Bible tells us to restore them, meaning get them back where they were. We should not ridicule them, shame them, or broadcast their private business. You know, God can't use certain people because they won't, they, won't, they won't shut up. You tell everything. Ooh. I don't want to say nothing, but... Oh. Amen. We should not ridicule them, ridicule them or broadcast their business. Proverbs 20 and 19 says, Whosoever goes about slandering reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a simple babbler. You know what simple means? Stupid. Do not associate with a stupid babbler. Somebody that babbles everybody's business. Say, don't associate with them. Amen. Oh, that's why they go the other way when they see me coming. That's right. Because you are a simple babbler. Can I preach in here? Restoration requires a relationship. Ooh, the church was created for this very reason. When we are accountable to one another, then we are able to reach out to each other in the manner of the scriptures and really help others get back on track. Amen. First Thessalonians 5 and 12 says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. Relationship. Look at somebody say relationship. You're supposed to know those that are laboring among you. That means there is a relationship there. That means you can be accountable to somebody you're in relationship with. <clears throat> Amen. However, we are not accountable to everyone that calls themselves a believer outside of those that we are in fellowship with. Some people don't like this part. I ain't accountable to everybody that calls themselves a believer. If I don't know you, certain things you can't tell me. And if I don't know you, certain things I'm not going to trust you with. And if I don't, amen. I need to know those that labor among me. Know those that are in fellowship with me. I need to know where this is coming from, what you saying to me. I need to know your motive. See? Yeah, that's a relation. It takes a relationship to know somebody's motive. When God is ready to give us something, he will use those that we are in fellowship with that do not have ulterior motives or evils, evil intentions. God needs to speak to me. He know how to speak to me. And he know who needs to tell me certain things. Yeah. Amen. Luke 17 and 3. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. If who sins? That's somebody you in relationship with. If your brother sins, rebuke him. Amen. You don't walk around going downtown rebuking folks. All you're doing is feeling good about yourself. No, you rebuke those that you're in fellowship with that you know, your brothers. 
Amen. Boy, this word, see, some folk don't like this. They feel like, I, well, I got the authority to just go in places. And, man, I'm very careful. When I go speak at certain places, I'm careful what I say. Now, if they bring me in and say, you know, do, do what you do, then I'm going to do what I do. Because I'm going to do what God tells me to do. But certain things I can't go in there and do under somebody else's authority. That's, amen. I respect preachers' houses. Yeah, and you have to do the same thing with people. You have to respect their business and not nosy in if you're not in good relationship with them. See, I know I'm preaching. Amen. This is why we should always maintain a good relationship with strong believers in a fellowship that can hold us accountable when we are irresponsible. This gives God the voices that we need to hear so that we can be admonished and reproved by those that love us and care about our spiritual condition. Hebrews 10 and 25, not forsaken or neglecting, and this is the amplified, to assemble together as believers, as is the habit of some people, but admonishing, which means warning, urging, and encouraging one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. That's what we do in here. Warning, urging, encouraging. But you need relationship for that. Amen. Somebody that you've been beefing with or they don't like you, they never like you, God's not going to give them a word for you. Amen. See, see, that, see. Now what is God going to use them for and you can't stand them? The Lord came and told me to tell you. That you need to quit doing that. Like, what? I mean, because you don't like them no way. Why would God do that? When he can use somebody that's in relationship with that person. That's how fellowship works. Now, there, are, there is authority in fellowships. Amen. So you don't have to like me. And I get to rebuke. You don't have to like Elder and he gets to rebuke you. Amen. You might not like Deacon, I mean uh, uh, Julian, Deacon Julian, but he can tell you what to do in here. See, because that's the hierarchy of authority that we have in place. Amen. You may not like Jay Bryan. Don't like his beats. But <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> he can tell your children what to do yeah. Yeah. amen and you best you best get on his side yeah. so he can help you with your crazy children yeah. amen yeah. it's just the that's, that's the authority we have in here amen. so certain people in here you know it, it don't matter how you feel but when it comes to lay members your own relationships in here God is not going to use somebody that you have issue with or has issue with you to tell you something to help you. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. No, no, man. No, 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 no. It don't work that way. So quit trying to use the Lord to get at somebody. You ain't talked to that person since y'all been members here. And all of a sudden, oh, oh, God knocked me out my bed and rolled me on the rug and said your name. I heard it three times. I think you manifested. That's what that was. You should have called the priest. I think you was manifesting a demon. Because, because of the way you was act, because of the way you've been acting toward her. Amen. So this is why we got to maintain good relationships. This gives God the voices that we need and he can talk to us through the people that we surround ourselves with. Amen? Amen. We must always consider ourselves when we are correcting others as well. Consider how you would like the situation to be handled if it was you that was in that state. How would you like the situation handled. 
that's why they, they, there should be no such thing as beefing in the house of the Lord. You shouldn't have beef with people in church. Some one of y'all's not considering the other person, and you're not considering yourself. Amen. When we, are, when we empathetically put ourselves in that position, then we will operate with care, concern, and love that we desire. You'll begin to treat people the way you want to be treated. Amen? If you want respect, respect people. You want honor, honor people. You want love, love people. Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Summary. <laughs> we will all need the grace and mercy of God to save us from our bad choices at some point. The last thing you want to do is to kick someone when they are down. Because when you are down, you will want someone to pray for you. We have to be better about caring for one another and trying to save souls from hell. You know, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Caring about one another and saving souls. How you beefing with somebody, you're supposed to be saving their soul from hell. Helping them not to go to hell and you wishing they were in hell. Might have told them to go to hell. How you helping them? Amen. No, I didn't cuss. See, look at somebody like, he just cuss. <laughs> Hell is real. <laughs> ain't no cuss the way I said it. I'm talking about the real hell. Amen. I ain't talking about the angry man saying it. I'm talking about folk going. You supposed to be saving folks from going to hell. And not telling them to go. You a Christian. Our whole job is to save people from hell. How you telling people to go? It's just getting mad. At <laughs> Lit, my mama said, just stop. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I done found the crease. I was going to stay right in there. Got some things I need to release. <laughs> all believers error and will always need others to help us. Listen to this though. God will put our answers and our deliverance in the possession of people. See, they weren't ready for that. Yeah, it was a little delayed hand clap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can pray, you can fast, you can do all that, and you still got to get it from somebody. Yeah, yeah, you just done, just fasted and just not ate for months. Trying to avoid people. I need God to speak. Speak it to me, Lord. Speak it in me. Speak it to me. Door knocking on the door. You won't answer the door. The answer's at the door knocking. God put it in somebody. Your answers and your deliverance are in the possession of people just so we will need people. It's all about people. The return of Christ is about getting people. He's coming back for people. He died for people. He created earth for people. He gave us dominion for people. He put people on the ark, killed everybody, started all over again with people. So you got to learn how to treat people. You got to learn how to love people. In order to get the answers and the deliverance you've been seeking. 
Some of y'all are bound by stuff because you won't listen to people. So you try to over spiritualize, but if you over spiritualize it, then there's no need for people. You pastor yourself, have your own church. Amen. Wake up, cereal. And your microphone. <laughs> you just around the table. That's your church. Yeah. You don't need nobody. I'll get it from God. I'll get it from God. Good luck with that. God's going to make you need somebody. Amen. Amen. When David thought he, oh, I'm a man after God's own heart. I can pretty much do whatever I want. Uh, he did something. And God didn't talk to him. Nathan came. Yeah. None of us are above reproach. Amen. All believers error and will always need the help of others. God will put our answers and deliverance in the possession of people just so we will need people. He will continue to make us treat each other the right way in order to be in good standing with him. He going to make us treat people the right way or we going to feel like trash. He going to make sure you, he going to single you out and make you feel like trash until you start treating people right. He's going to let the cares of his life whip you until you start treating people right. So when we fall, we need one another to do what? Lift us up again. This requires us to love one another consistently so that we can be trusted by others in their time of their need. See, when you love consistently, then when they get in trouble, they can call you and trust you. Amen. If we keep a reputation of kicking folks when they are down or gossiping about people's personal failures, then we will never be trusted with anyone's situations. They will avoid us knowing anything about them and definitely not believe we were sent by God to help them. So God ain't going to send you, you old gossiping rich. God ain't going to send you. Joe can't tanker himself. God's not going to use you. But when we maintain a consistent life of loving and caring, then when failure occurs, we can be trusted by others. And when we fall, others will be there to help bring us back. Amen. James 5 and 19 says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall do what? Save a soul from death and what? So what you've been dealing with can be hidden because you went to help somebody else. Now ain't that something? Ain't that something? Con you got to convert the sinner from the error. We're not kicking folks down in here. We're going to help people get where they need to be. Amen. And we're going to get help to get where we need to be. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. See, it don't take a long time. Amen. So I want to pray for you. If that's you and you want God to use you to help other people and you want God to fix that part of you so that you can reach out to others and be there for others. And, you know, we all go through a selfish time in our lives where it's about us. But now God is leading you to say, oh, no, no, you need some friends in here. You need some people in here that you can be around, that you can be helped by, and that you can bless. If that's you, just come on up. Amen. Amen. Family members and just different ones. Man, Lord, help my relationships. Help my mouth so I know when to shut up. 
Amen. Growing up, I used to just make my mama and daddy just so nervous when they would take me places. Because I'd just say anything. And I had to have the Lord fix that. God, I only want to say what you want me to say. Now I'm so careful with my words. I don't fly off the handle and go off and have to come back. Man, I really didn't mean to destroy your life. I'm not that guy. God fixed that. So now I can say what needs to be said in order to help people. Amen. And that's how we all need to be. So everyone bow your heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this message. We thank you, Father God, for, Lord, how you're speaking to us in this hour to prepare us for your return. And Father, we want to help prepare others and we want to be prepared. So Father, right now we ask that you just take all animosity, anger, malice, hatred, envy, jealousy, whatever it is in our hearts, God, that makes us only think of ourselves. We ask that you remove that and use us, Father. Use us. Give us compassion. Give us love. Father God, give us care and concern for each other. Let us see this fellowship as a family. And everyone in here with all the different backgrounds and all the different understandings. Father, let us see this fellowship and these that are here as our family. And help us to love them like we love ourselves. Help us to love them even more than our own family. Help us to buy into the love in this place. Father God, help us to be concerned so we don't kick them when they're down. We don't talk down on anyone. We don't gossip and we're not tail bearers and we're not trying to make people look bad and feel bad and put our mouths on this one and that one and Father God we don't ostracize them when they fall and we don't ridicule them when they make errors because we all have errored we all have fallen we've all needed your grace and your mercy to bring us back where we needed to be so Father God help us pray the prayers to bring them back Instead of talking about them. When we hear of our brother and sister falling. Help us Father God to say. What needs to be said. The right way. Help us Father God to pray a prayer. Of restoration. And have a desire to see others. Come back to you. In Jesus name. We pray. Amen. 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 Come on, hug somebody. Tell them I'm going to bring somebody back. I'm going to bring them back. I'm bringing somebody back. I'm bringing somebody. Somebody, when they fall or down on their luck, I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to make sure they're okay. I'm going to love like God loves. Amen. Amen.